All right, welcome everyone. Today I will be discussing Tara Singleton, the classic object oriented pattern. Um, let's see. Let's start with when is it good to use the singleton pattern? Um, the author talks about two, two, two distinct types of situations. One, when, when a object, an instance of an object represents a unique physical object um, within the context of the program. That's very important to, to say within the context of the program. And it, it represents something, something real that, that the program controls. For example, the author talks about uh, car uh, software running inside a car and for that software even though you know many cars exist but for from the context of this software it makes sense to only have one engine um, one car one set of brakes and so on um, another example uh, author gives is something like a mars orbiter software um, and it's got microcontroller there's some software running on it right and that software uh, bad things would happen if this software had two instances of Sun or Earth or Mars, right? Logically, it makes sense that the objects representing such entities, the real physical entities, um, always refer to the same one. Uh, another scenario is when there is a unique uh, logical entity, again, within the context of the program, such as memory pool, for example. Um, if you want to optimize your software, use um, you know some high performance memory pool. It usually makes sense to have just one instance of it. Um, similarly, with a thread pool, uh, if you create a thread pool that has the same number of threads as there are cores in the system, um, why would you need two of those, right? Uh, you can create just one, map it one to one to hardware, and so on. Um, another example would be something like a lock manager. So there are there are instances where locking um, and you know mutual exclusion is is handled by a third party, if you would, by something called lock manager, uh, that can you know that can handle uh, very difficult situations like you know needing multiple locks, um, and it can make sure that locks are you know locked and unlocked in in the right order and so on. <clears throat> also. Um, a word of, of on criticism, which I found very interesting in this chapter, was that people often criticize Singleton uh, when, in reality, they are really criticizing the fact that there is one global, um, and you know, saying, implying that this is a bad, um, bad design of the software in general. Singleton is merely a solution to that, to that concept of having uh, having one global. Um, Moving on, so let's look at the first naive implementation of a singleton. Um, and here you will see a snippet of code. Part of it is in the header file. Um, there's some, some classes defined. An external variable of that type is, is declared here. And then it is defined in the CPP file. Um, then one can include the header file multiple times. And the instance variable will always refer to to the same object that was allocated, you know, statically in the CPP file. Now, th this solution doesn't actually prevent multiple instances from being created, right? Because anyone can create an instance of this singleton class. Um, and moreover, if you must have a singleton, uh, it's better to to wrap it through through some sort of a singleton class, uh, because at least if it's one global, you have controlled access to to everything in the singleton, right? Uh, so that's that's one approach. Now don't do it, but that's just an example. Um, a second approach is something called a static singleton. So this this solution you see here is a class SS. It's got a public constructor and a, and a getter method, but all the variables inside of it are statics. So you may create multiple instances of this class, but they will always still refer to one instance of, of data and context. <clears throat> Next is the famous uh, Mayers singleton approach. And Mayers, because Scott Mayers, the famous C++ guy, uh, authored it. And <clears throat> it has certain benefits, certain drawbacks. 
um, it is lazily initialized. So you'll see here that in the instance method, uh, there is a static instance of class ms, and it will be initialized only when you actually call ms colon colon instance. When you actually request the instance of the single room, only then will it be created. Now, in the past, this was not thread safe. Um, there had to exist a lock somewhere inside the instance method that would synchronize multiple threads um, as you know, trying to acquire an instance, especially at the very first time when it's being initialized, right? The locking was only needed for that purpose. Once the object is initialized, you can hand out pointers to it um, simultaneously to multiple threads, but the initialization was an issue. And this, however, was addressed by the C++ 17 standard, I believe. Um, don't quote me on it, I think it was C++ 17 that made, made a guarantee that initialization of local static variables will be thread safe. The issues with this approach are several. One of them is that the order of destruction um, when the singletons depend on one another is, uh, can be problematic. What do I mean? You have one singleton, uh, something like, say, a memory manager, and then another singleton, something like a logger. This is example straight out of the book. And it can so happen that you use first singleton, and then it depends on the second one and initializes it lazily. Um, and the issue may be that they will be, they will be destroyed in the reverse order of initialization, which may not always be desirable. Um, even though you initialize some singleton object first, um, like say the memory manager, um, and then the logger second, uh, the logger will be destroyed first, but maybe during destruction of the memory manager, you still want to log something, say how much total memory was handed out or whatever. And at this point, the instance of a logger would have already been destroyed. And the, the very common symptom of that problem is when your program crashes on exit, right? The statics are destroyed after the main function completes, and sometimes you will observe a crash. Uh, so this is this is solved by uh, creating static points pointers instead of static instances. Now I don't have an example of this. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but where you have the static ms instance variable, if you replace it with static ms pointer instance and initialize it with new ms, um, this problem will go away, right? Because the, the destructors, these, these objects will never actually be destroyed. And that's something that's referred to as, as leaky singletons. Um, because they're never properly destroyed. They live you know, up until the very last cycle of the program running. Uh, the memory will eventually be freed up by the operating system, but you have to design them in such a way that they can simply be destroyed like this. Just, just they can simply cease to exist in the middle of their, of their lifetime and no, no bad side effects will occur. Like, you know, you will properly close handles, you know, send the final, um, end packet on a network or something like this. Um, another, another problem with this approach is that it's, it duplicates code, right? You have, you have to repeat this um, public static instance method. You have to uh, create, you know, define these um, private uh, constructors and so on, uh, and also delete some of the uh, special members like assignment operators <coughs> and copy constructors. So. Uh, this is where the author stopped with, uh, with the singleton pattern, which frankly was a little disappointing because it can be done so much better um, by using the CRTP, curiously recurring singleton, I mean, sorry, curiously recurring template pattern. So this is, uh, this is code uh, taken straight out of my, my uh, blog example, where I attempted several implementations of of the uh, CRTP singleton. And here, this code is finally reusable. Uh, and another thing I, I did, which I didn't like about classical in singletons, was that when you requested an instance, it created 
that instance for you, but it assumed default construction, <clears throat> which I didn't really like. Uh, so here I separated the instance, the obtaining of the instance from creation of the instance. And you will see there is a there's a static lock on there. Um, it locks the create method and initializes this uh, s underscore instance, which is just a unique pointer. Um, it's it's held as a unique as a static unique pointer, guaranteeing that whatever was allocated, the subject was allocated on the heap, it will be properly destroyed. Again, there may with this approach, there may they may still be an issue uh, with uh, with order of destruction, but that's that's besides the, the point in this example. So it's finally reusable, um, separates construction from access, but the way you have to use it requires two things. The class that you are actually want to be a singleton, here the class S is the singleton, still needs to have a private constructor. Um, again, all the other special members, I, I omitted that for the sake of space in the slides, uh, but the other special members like copy, assignment, and move, and so on should be deleted. Uh, but again, they still require um, private constructors, and then they require this friendship, because since since the class you're inheriting from the singleton template, uh, since that class is responsible for creating the instances of or one instance of class S, it needs to be a friend in order to access the private constructor. And let's see. So that was the first example of CRTP. Now, this is, uh, again, something I called abstract singleton. This is my own creation. Um, I came up with it a, a while ago when, uh, when, you know, when writing a post about this, about singletons. And I wanted to be able to simply just inherit. What if, what if a class that I want to make it a singleton could simply just publicly inherit from something I called abstract singleton, and then it would have no other constraints. So the constructors could be public, right? And there would be no friendship. So how do I how do I achieve that? I know it's a handful, um, but because see, because the class, I'm gonna go back one slide, because the class AS which is going to be your singleton, inherits publicly from the abstract singleton. That means it can have some things injected into it. And what I came up with was that I'm going to inject a pure virtual method. Um, it is defined as the very last line in the, in the code sample here. And the presence of this pure virtual method immediately makes the singleton type abstract. Right? You cannot create instances of, of classes that define a pure virtual method. And then I solved this, uh, this limitation by creating an actually different type inside the create function, besides the locking that's required there. Notice I, for, for the abstract singleton that, that holds a type T, I create a private local type Q that inherits from T publicly. And that type Q, uh, this statement using T colon colon T, that simply brings in whatever constructors are defined in T, it brings them in to the scope of Q, and it implements this pure virtual as a NOAP. But now, because it implements this, this hidden pure virtual function, I can now create instances of it. So then when it's finally time to, to reset my S instance, uh, which you can see kind of in the middle of, of this code sample, I can now create a new Q, and it's fine while still the, the, the T, or in this example, this, this AS class that inherits from abstract singleton, it, is, it will be a compile time error if you try to create an instance of it. Uh, of course, you, know, you could go and implement this pure virtual here in the private section, but that would kind of defeat this, this whole mechanism, right? Uh, again, like I said, I wanted, I wanted this as clean and as simple as possible, just by merely just inheriting. Um, and otherwise, um, every, you know, everything else stays the same. The, um, this abstract singleton, you know, has a default constructor. It's you still, you know, need to, uh, need to delete 
um, all the other special member functions, although you, you probably may get away without it since it's abstract anyway. Um, and the only thing is that you see there is a virtual destructor here, which frankly, I don't think it's needed, but because it plays plays a role, you know, because it plays with the pure virtual methods, um, I put it there anyway. But when you think about it, when you finally delete the instance of Q, um, Q doesn't have any destructor. It just has the default. So this abstract singleton destructor is probably, you could probably get away without making it uh, virtual, and it would still be, you know, would still be called properly, I think. Um, let's see. So that's it. That's uh, that's my take on the chapter and uh, my proposed CRTP solution to to the problem of singletons.